enough to let us use their office as a gallery to run them up with. Um, and Concreta Sala, I'm going every day. And also Miami Community Radio, of course, where you can find this live recording as we speak. So I'm sitting here with Rizobo. I'm sorry, I should have asked for your pronunciation beforehand. Um, you can just call me Rai or Rizo. Oh, Rizo. Um, you oh. can still put on there because it's going to go directly to the broadcast. Yeah, make sure to talk to the mic. Oh, yeah. beautiful, yes. So you're Rai, and yeah. then I'm here with Yen as well, right? Cool. Awesome. Well, thanks for sitting with us today. This chair is really friendly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> cool, cool, cool. So I've got a lot of questions for y'all. I'm really intrigued by your work. I think it's really refreshing to see artists sort of play outside of uh, the white cube format and just really dive into this uh, a more um, immersive sort of uh, mode of display. And I noticed that you guys are really into wearable art, into like blending the, blurring the line between like fashion and art. You're also doing a lot of performance. There's a performance coming at that 8 p.m. by the way, guys. Um, you're also experimenting with other media such as there's like this all crazy audio hookup system where you touch the sculpture in certain places and it makes sounds. It's, it's insane. So I just want to know, uh, first off, what kind of influences, whether art related or not, uh, outside of that, you know, have sort of struck you, have inspired you to create in this way that is pushing so many boundaries? Um, and yeah, that's obviously for both of you. So you want to go first? <laughs> All right. Uh, I have a lot of influences that have affected me. I think um, initially, when I first started creating like art in this manner was a lot of like psychedelic art, things I felt like I'd want to see when I'm tripping. Yeah. Because I was like, that, sure. that kind of like, that was where I was in that point in my life. Mm -hmm. Right, then, so I started like, at first like, you know, making costumes. I thought seeing people in costumes was always such an experimental thing to see and using those in videos. Mm. So I wanted to make something, you know, I can like, I would watch if I was tripping myself. For sure. Yeah. Um. I don't know. I felt like when I first started, it was very simple, basic stuff like painting. But mm -hmm. then I kept wanting to push myself further, like, what else can I do? Like, how far can this take me? So that's when I, this year, I've really pushed myself. I started doing fabric and just, like, experimenting a lot with different things. Yeah. Your soft sculptures are really amazing, I have to say. I Thank love you. I, I just, I want to touch it, I want to wear it, I want to <laughs> have it on my couch, like, what is, is there any sort of function that goes behind these pieces in particular, like, let's say this one right here, that this centerpiece, what were you thinking about when you made this one? I honestly don't know, I just wanted to make something massive, Yeah. and it could do, like, it looks good anywhere, like, I put it on the couch, I put it on my bed, like, it just, it's very nice, I don't know. It's very fluid, yeah, I get a sense of fluidity from you, both of you guys' work. I get a sense of um, sort of like you're tapping into something cosmic that's like bigger than all of us, right? Very esoteric, but also through this means that is very also accessible and youthful. It's mm -hmm. not, um, what do you call that? Like, it's not condescending at all. It's not like, oh, this is too deep for you. You don't understand <laughs> it. It's very like, this is within all of us, just introspect sort of thing. It's a very like, psychedelic subconscious uh, feel that I'm getting from this. Um, so I'm sort of wondering like with that in mind, since you guys are so interested in this sort of like psych psychedelic sort of mystical uh, sort of thing, I'm wondering if there's any personal value to that for you. Uh, do you like do you practice any like mysticism? I see there's a singing bowl here. We've got some roomy tarot cards. Uh, speak more on that. Uh, I, I probably can talk for hours on this type of topic <laughs> myself because at a deep level it, like everything I do in related to art has been a part of my spiritual practice whether like anyone's like interacting with me actually realize it it feels it's a ceremony for myself where I'm each performance is a level I'm tapping into and celebrating a different avenue within my own self like this like this giant massive guy on the wall mm -hmm. um, he's my very first costume and it was this level of who is my inner self? Who do I want to show the world to be? And he became my representation of my body. Mm. So my costumes and performances have been this idea of my mind, my body, and my soul. So each character is highlighting each of those aspects. I respect that. So each character is sort of highlighting a different part of you, is what you're saying. Yeah. 
that's really cool. Does he have a name? I've called him Blue. Blue. He just he just feels like a blue. Simple, perfect. Yeah. What part of you does he encapsulate? My body. Just your body. Yes, it is my because he. I started like, performing with him like in the streets, like dancing, and it just felt like this movement of like, he would just flow in the just dance. For sure, with the tassels dripping yeah, off and so stuff. So it was just this is what my body feels like. This is what I want people to see my body as. Yeah, honestly, I'm getting. I'm thinking of this artist. Have you heard of Nick Cave before? I feel like I've been, I've met, someone has mentioned that. Has me. anyone heard of the artist Nick Cave? Yeah. Nick Cave, right? So he makes a lot of uh, sound suits. So he actually, he was really prolific in the late 90s, in 1999 in uh, response to the Rodney King riots, because mm -hmm. uh, he is a black artist. Um, he made these series of sound suits to sort of protect himself from the violence of the outside world, but also protect his identity from other people so that they can't form judgments about him. Mm -hmm. So they can't see the color of his skin. Uh, they just have this suit that he made to go off of. Um, so I'm just wondering, like, does that, does that speak to you? Is there any sort of parallel? It definitely, there? definitely, deeply resonates to me because I'm working on like my future kind of projects is like costumes that incorporating sound and like whole performances that incorporate like installations that are based on sound. Great, that's awesome. Yeah, that's really exciting. So, and what about you, Yen? Uh, what are some? Do you have any like mystical influences? Um, it's hard for me to verbalize my inspiration like where it comes from but I just I always strive to just create pieces that are very symmetrical balance they mm. coexist within themselves like I just have this visualization in my head of just like I guess maybe peace or tranquility like that's just what I strive for when I create like something that's very pleasing to me and I also have a lot of like religious influence like a higher being like God or like a source of things and yeah I feel like that kind of shows with this piece like for sure that, yeah it wasn't intentional I realized that after I made it I'm like wow yeah oh interesting <laughs> so for you it's more of like an intuitive process it's more like I'm feeling it out I'm gonna see where I end up and yeah. then it ends up being about God because that's just what you have on your mind or what's working through you yes yeah, that's cool. I really like this, like, Aztec, because pre me personally, I'm very inspired by pre-Columbian art and mysticism, so I couldn't help but notice this sort of, like, spiral, serp feathered serpent-like um, sort of iconography, so I was wondering if that was intentional. But that's even cooler that it's just coming yeah, from within no, you. <laughs> I just, that figure, like, that face, I've just been using it a lot. I also have another one over there that's, like, a spiral. I've noticed that. Yeah, you, you do a lot of, like, um, symmetry but also this sort of like dualism this sort of like these two faces that are looking in opposite directions and it's sort of like holding two opposites creates yes. like a whole yes i also love that concept of like yin yang like mm. dark light like you know like but co like coexisting within themselves like i love that concept yeah for sure speaking of coexisting actually i really like the way you guys displayed your work as if it's sort of blurring the lines between who did what. Obviously, your styles are very distinct, and we can tell, like, this is Yen's piece, and this is, you know, Rai's sculptures over here. But it's displayed in a way where it's not competing with each other. It's working together very cohesively. There's even, I believe, this piece is fully collaborative, right? You guys worked on this together. Yes. <laughs> could, you, could you speak to that process, actually? So who did what part, and how did you guys think of this together? Well, I had done a project uh, earlier in the year with plaster. I plastered my chest and I took the mold and I, I told him this idea and then he's like, oh, what if we have like, like, cause I've been dying to do a full body. So I brought it to him and then he came with the idea of, he had the whole, like. Yeah, I think I, I came in, I had a vision of um, like this main sculpture for the room that is interactive, makes sounds because of, I had a friend who had an instrument like the instrument I'm using to make the sounds on this figure. And I was like, I can do something with this idea. <laughs> so I want to make a sculpture that felt like the fulfillment of my body. It's the fulfillment of my mind, my body, and soul completely in alignment. Oh. And so I didn't know how to like describe that. And then I was mentioning this idea to Yen, and she was uh, she mentioned, uh, what if you just do a full body cast of someone? Mm -hmm. And I was like, <laughs> 
clicked. Yeah, yeah it was clicked. immediately, yes, that is a perfect exact idea. That's great. It seems like you guys work really well together. How did you guys meet? It was like on an event. I was vending and we just talked and we started like talking but then it's really funny because we we were talking about like collaborating on something mm -hmm. like a small art piece and then Steph reached out to both of us to do this which was like amazing yeah it was wow it's crazy so serendipitous yeah, yeah. everything's <laughs> it was connected so beautiful like and I remember first thing that caught my eye when I met when I saw her stuff was that she had a bunch of these earrings with little eyes on them hmm. and I told her I want to buy one yes but she didn't have them ready, and I still don't have them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, it's, I've been so busy, like, I don't know, yeah. Wait, so yeah, and you make jewelry too. Yes. Cool, Yeah, awesome. I've just been, this year, I've been experimenting a lot, like a crazy mad scientist, different mediums, like. In the lab. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, okay, speak more on um, your process, like, cause for a pair of people that, can make a space so immersive. I'm wondering how you make your creative space. Like, what is your studio like? What are you listening to? What time of day do you like to create? Like, take me through all of it. So, I wish I had a studio space. Thankfully, uh, I have my parents' garage. Nice. <laughs> That's more than any of us could hope for. Some of us are working out of our bedrooms, so you actually have it made with that. <laughs> Normally, it's out of my bedroom, but for this project, I was like, told my parents, I need a big space, and they're like, and I was like, can I come to your house and like take your garage over? Yeah, no, that's so, perfect. Yeah. Bless you guys over there. <laughs> Shouts out to the parents. But most of the time, it's been like just alone, but I find I always create the best and the most when I'm like working with other people or just mm. being in the same space as someone else creating. Cool. It's always like inspired me to do even more. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I feel like the presence of other people is there to sort of like hold you accountable. And there's like, I feel like with your work, especially, it's so performative sometimes that having other people there contributing their energy, that makes sense that it's feeding your, your creative process. Yes, I remember like when I was making that, uh, my first costume, um, I was living in New York at the time. Oh, wow. And I was joining this art collective called Eight Ball Community. Mm. And they had this huge space. It was the first time I ever experienced anything like this. And it was this open to the public community to use. They had a TV station with like, wow. green screens and cameras, a whole radio station with, like, um, with CVJs for like, people to use and learn how to use them. No way. Zine making, just equipment for people. And I was like, it's, like, it's completely free to use. It's all for open volunteers. What? You just volunteer time to the space and you can become part of it. And I'm like, oh my God, this is exactly what I needed. And then having that communal space, like seeing someone right next to me working on like some completely different project gave me like, I feel like I need to create something. And mm. having the tools accessible to myself, like I find having space and the tools necessary to create is such an important thing. Absolutely. And like that just, it blew my mind having just the space to create. For sure. I think of creativity like a, like a fluid thing and it can only take as much space up as its container like it's you're very confined by space and i know that in a place like miami where the rent's getting crazy and studio spaces are getting even more and more coveted you know it's it's really it's a blessing to have to have space as an artist especially making works of this magnitude of this scale and what about you yen what's your studio process like what's your environment like in my room, in your room? <laughs> it's very cramped I feel like my whole life has just been art. Um, I usually create at night, I stay up, which is not good, but I don't know why, I just, my work habit is very like, like I need to remind myself to take a break, like to drink water, to do yes. these things, because like, I just get in like a, in the zone, like in. I just, yeah. yeah. <laughs> For sure, I actually really relate to that. It's like starting the process is always such a pain, but then once I get into that flow, it's almost like I'm not in my body anymore. I don't know if you guys relate to that. Like it's it's very meditative for yeah. me. Like I, it's very, it's like I release something when I go into this routine of just like mm. creating, working on something. I love it. Yeah, for sure. It sounds really healthy. Um, and did you guys always know that you were going to go into art, like even as kids? Was it something that you always did as a kid? Uh, was your family supportive of it? Tell me more about how art, the role of art in your life as you were growing up. 
Um, I think I've always been creative. I just, in high school is when I discovered like a medium that satisfied me, which was like digital art, like Photoshop. And then after that I evolved into different mediums, but I remember spending like a year before, like in high school, just very frustrated because I didn't know how to express myself mm. effectively. Yeah. So I just remember feeling very frustrated in that period, but once I found that outlet, it was like boom, like, like it you was flourished. amazing. Yeah. <laughs> That's beautiful. That's beautiful. What about you, Ray? I find this question kind of funny because art, I feel like art isn't my main thing I do. I always feel like my passion, what I want to do in life is agriculture, farming. Really? Yes. So this has actually been like, creating art has always been like just a hobby to myself. Um, but also it's a deep outlet that I needed. Like I started actually creating stuff like this in 2019. So I really have not started experimenting this kind of stuff until really recently. And my first like, you know, performance art piece and like installations I started doing a year ago. Wow. And, but I had always done music. Music was always like where I started off creation. Creating was, um, you know, my parents put me in marching band in high school and all that jazz. Cool. They, thankfully they paid for it and I found like, even the same way I create now, in these like streams of consciousness surrounded by other people, I would always like be at, be in school, just in the in the band room, just practicing hour after hour till the middle of the night. Mm. Wow, that kind of determination in your yeah. youth is a little psycho. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> can, I, can I add something? Of course. I just want to say that my mom and my sister have always been so supportive. Woo Shouts out! No matter what I do, like my mom is always there. Like, yes, I love it. It's beautiful. I just want to say thank you for that because if it wasn't for them like supporting me, motivating me, giving me the space to create, I would not be able to do any of this. So Absolutely. That's <laughs> so real. We love when parents are supportive of whatever we want to do that's obviously good for us, you know. <laughs> but um, yeah, especially art, I feel like it's so, it's so looked down upon. So it's especially, you know, exploring these mediums that are so new and so unconventional to have parents that will still rock with that. You know, because I know there's parents out there that are also like, no, if you're going to be an artist, you got to do like traditional fine art. You know, there's always like something, but you are just out here making whatever the hell you want to do. And that is that's that's admirable as hell. And I'm really glad you have a space to do that. Um, I want to talk a little bit more about your process. Um, do you have like a favorite medium to work with each of you? I noticed that you mostly do cloth. You do painting. Do you make like little ceramic dudes over there too? Yes, and, like, I have. Little wooden yes. tol totems and stuff. Yes. And you make jewelry. So there's a lot of different media that you guys are exploring. I'm wondering, do you guys have a favorite and why? My <laughs> favorite, I think, will always be digital art because it's where I started, and it's very. I'm very comfortable with it, and I think that's like the root of all this. Like it's always going to be digital art for me. Like my main my og you know <laughs> like yeah, it's day sure. one for sure what about you right so i feel this is a very hard question because i'm constantly changing what i do <laughs> like i have never worked with plaster until this in, in, until this project and i've never really worked with, like ha most of the materials here like i think um i started like loving using like yarn and fabrics as my initial kind of things and then i just kind of discovered like the uses of like like mylar paper and cellophane wrap, which is you can see surrounding this entire room. Yeah, <laughs> and I, was I like, feel like I'm inside like a spaceship here. So like, and I started using that probably a couple months ago. So it's like, and I'm like exploring like plaster and sound effects all together. So I'm constantly changing what I do. So I really have no, no favorite. There's no favorite medium as long as it's immersive. Yeah, for sure. I think my Have you ever tried projecting on Mylar? Yes, yes. Actually, what's it called? That projector right there is supposed to be playing, um, supposed to be connected to this sculpture and playing visuals to go along with it oh. when you touch it. But technical difficulties. Yeah, of course. For next time. There's a lot of moving parts yeah. in this space to account for. That's cool. What about, um, are there any mu 
like mediums that you guys want to explore in the future? Anything that you've got on your horizon that you're like, maybe that's next. I kind of want to experiment with that. I've been very intrigued by uh, virtual reality, like those, like a room full of just like a giant screen and you walk in and you're completely submersed or like VR, like you put on the goggles and you can explore a new terrain. Like I, I want to try that in the future. I think that's, it's very fascinating to me. You mentioning that reminds me, uh, there was a event, it was a free event, really cool at this gallery right next door actually, Monday night for a pre-Basel, uh, forget the name of that. Uh, the one right here, it's like a VR lab. It's a photography training lab. Oh. It's called Art Medium. Art Medium? No, that's not the place. What was the place? No, it was um, it was Mud Mud Foundation. Have you been there? Yeah, Mud Foundation. They, if you guys uh, ever want to check it out, it's literally right next door to anyone here. They had this really cool um, immersive installation with actually Queef Latina, one of my favorite drag artists. Um, they did like a like a whole VR thing. You can you could literally like log onto the computers and go into like the metaverse, which I thought was cool because. I've, I hear about the metaverse and I'm just like, mm, I don't even know where to start with that shit. I also like don't, I don't really, uh. but then if they have a computer like right there in front of you in the public, it's like, okay, I'll click around and see what's up. And I went in to the virtual room and it was actually really cool. It was a whole virtual gallery space that you could walk around and um, I would just love to experience your art like that because it already has this very like, introspective sort of like magnetic like it's pulling you in to yourself uh and so to have that in a vr space would be insane you should definitely experiment with that and i'm sure places like mud foundation are you know they're interested in in um you know bolstering like local artists there's nothing but pretty much nothing but local artists in that space so definitely some someone to to maybe get in contact with if you ever want to explore that thank you yeah yeah of course what about you, Ryan? You mentioned sound art. Yeah, I feel like I'm. I'm feeling like wanting to go back to like my roots of making music. Cool. Like, I've always felt like when I was making music, it wasn't just a musician. I feel like I was a performer. Like, I know my very favorite part was like, my one of my always deep memories of making music was just performing, looking down like the line of like my other like teammates like in the line playing marimba with me, mm -hmm. and just like as soon as we're just like, playing a run. We look at each other and just have that smile that we just nailed it. Yeah, for sure. That's like, the best and feeling. The, the showing that off, like just the way the level of movement doing it all of that. Yeah. Would you perform like in costume? I would definitely. Like, the sh performance later tonight, uh, tonight is going to be in costume with sounds. Oh, great. Looking forward to that. So awesome. I'm definitely wanting to like, now that I've like experimented so much more avenues, bringing everything back into music. Yeah, absolutely. So. I, I think your work definitely, it lends itself to that. Because, um, you know, where there's performance and there's wearable art, your wearable art is also very kinetic, you know? I look at that man and I'm like, why isn't he moving? Like, he looks like he should be moving. <laughs> it's got all these <laughs> strings. Um, so yeah, that obviously that ties into music really well. Have you seen uh, Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared? Yes. Because that, doesn't that, does anyone know that net se that internet series? Like, doesn't that look like the guy from Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared? Like, was that in the back of your mind at all when you were making that, maybe? I think a to a bit? level of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I also got Cookie Monster from it a lot. Right, that too, yeah, <laughs> for sure. But I kind of just like, so my inner self it just looks like Cookie Monster. <laughs> yeah, I love that for you. I, I, yeah, I could see that. Yeah, that, that YouTube series actually kind of makes sense as like a subconscious influence for you because... I do get this sort of like introspective, creative, um, sort of experimental vibe that, but that also has like a little bit of like a nightmarish quality to it. Like a <laughs> there's got like this psychedelic edge that makes you a little bit like curious, like what is this talking about? So yeah, that, that definitely makes sense as an influence. Um, so let's get more in depth into. Um, I, this piece, I'm just gravitating towards this piece behind us because I really want to know more about the meaning behind it. So you said it's an exploration of your body, but it's Yen's body, right? It's your... It's, no, isn't it's, that your... Is she, uh, is she right here? Uh, my friend Gael. 
She oh, the really model. Cover her entire body in plaster mold. Oh, that's a true friend right yes. there. Yes, <laughs> and I had met her a week before. I met her that week, and I was like, "Hey, you want me to? Will you let me cover you with some plaster?" Oh and my was, god! Hell yeah! Wow! She was so down immediately. We all need a down ass friend like that. That's <laughs> cool. She's yeah. so, so about all my crazy ideas. Yeah, that's great. And this is a really cool idea. I, I'm really excited by this uh, integration of sound and, and physicality, especially because this like little device that you have, what's the name of it? It's called a Playtronic. A Playtronic, there you go. Yes, I've wanted a Playtronic forever. And it's just really cool that we get to like play with it now. It's, it's amazing. So what, what, what inspired you to incorporate that? And like, you know, let's, let's get in depth in, into this piece. What, is, what were you guys thinking about when you made this? Well, like I said, like the initial, so I, will, I think we need to go back to like, this has been kind of feels like a con conclusion of a year long of performances. Mm -hmm. My um, first performance this year, I was wearing that costume mm -hmm. and it was just this level of like, this is my body. I'm doing a show for my body. And then my next show was involved um, me wearing this big plant costume, which you can see his little mask up there. Yes. Oh, I recognize that one. Yeah, you you performed in that at Phil's uh, house show yes. on Earth Day. You dressed up as a big bush, so and you did like this sound bath performance with. I think you were playing guitar, right? Yes. He What's your name? Nico. Diego. Nico. Oh, Nico. Okay, cool. So yeah, Nico and Rai, you were performing. Mm. I remember that performance. It was very. I think you guys passed out instruments to the we crowd, did. right? To participate, yeah. Speak, speak more on that performance as well, because oh, that show. Everyone should have been there. That was so amazing. That was so fun. Okay, so where did I go from there? So this this started back in like December. I had just made the plant costume, mm -hmm. and I had done another installation. It was my very first performance piece and installation here in Miami, and it was um I was in this plant costume. I had projections going around. Had a little TV screen playing a video I had made, and I was offering people to come into the space and write things that they're worried about, their anxieties, and I'll take it, give it to a plant to be composted. Oh, wow. So you're not, your worries aren't disappearing, but they're being transformed to something beautiful and new. That's insane. And I love that concept. Coming out of this plant costume, I had this whole kind of like performance idea of, what's it called? I actually haven't thought about this performance in quite some time. <laughs> <laughs> no worries, take your time. It's been about a year since I, did, I started doing that. Mm -hmm. But I remember, no, someone asked me to do a live stream performance. And I was like, okay, what can I do? What can I do? And I had developed this whole idea about like man's relationship with nature. Mm -hmm. So going like a level of worship initially, and then man becoming more aggressive to nature, starts taking from it, yes, and then feeling emotional anguish and pain in themselves because they're hurting nature. Yeah, because they are nature. Yeah. Yeah. And then going back and forth, then going back from that, like when humanity starts trying to help nature, which is doing the sound bath. Yeah. It was, you would feel that love yourself. For sure. And the nature would start doing it back to you. And it also kind of reminds me of like, um, Mort Garrison, Mort Garrison, Mort Garson. God, what's the name of that guy? He did like Plantasia. You know that album Plantasia? Yes. Where he like designed it for, you know, to play I to love your that plants. Album. I love that album so much. Yeah, yeah. I could definitely, it reminds me of that. I really love that concept of, you know, communicating with other species in, in these ways that, you know, supersede language because language isn't the only form of communicating and it just really drives that home. Have you guys ever heard of the book Ishmael? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I haven't. What about you, right? I have not. Yeah. What about you, Yen? No? Yeah, so it's, I, I think you guys would be really interested in it. Just real quick, I wanted to tell you, um, it's, because I, I, I keep thinking about it, like, through the course of this conversation, but it's basically this man sees this poster, and it says, we have to save the world now, and he goes to the number, and goes to the address, and he finds this gorilla sitting in a room, <laughs> and the gorilla basically is grilling him the whole time and telling him, like, you know, oh, you're a stupid human being for thinking that, you know, you're different from animals and that you humans think you're different from nature and that you're trying to, like, conquer it all the time, but you are nature and you're just going to end up killing yourselves. And he's, yeah. like, walking him through all the logical fallacies of, like, these 
this ego that we build as human beings that we're mm -hmm. better than other animals and I don't know I think it's it, it would be fruitful for you all I would to, love to, look that up. to read that I think it would re be really cool um, would with, inform you. with the plant costume like going mm -hmm. back to the whole idea yeah it was sure. how you represent my mind like I mentioned like you know studying agriculture plants botany is all like my jazz mm -hmm. I thought my the best way to represent my mind was by being a plant nice and then the performance after that, which I felt like was like a big conclusion, was I had made this whole cloud room, just this room you could walk into full of clouds and an angel to be inside of it. And I felt this room was like my representation of my soul. And after doing those three performances, I started exploring different ideas, but I wanted to make something that felt like a level of balance between my mind, my body, and my soul. Mm -hmm. So I want to, who, is, who would that be when you reach a level of transcendence? Hmm. What does that person look like, right? Or, and that's, that's what this is. And personally, I think what for me is the costume I'm wearing right now is going into this idea of like this crystallized, beautiful kind of like bright creature mm -hmm. is who I want to be when I'm in balance. Hmm. Yeah, I definitely get a sense of balance for sure in your work because um, in both of you guys' work you are talking about, it seems like you're blurring the line between the natural and the synthetic, between reality and simulacra, between earth and outer space. It seems like you both are moving between these two poles and just sort of pointing out that it's a lot more fluid than that, uh, which is a really interesting concept really. Uh, lends itself well to very nuanced work. I think there's a lot of different directions that you can take it. Um, I'm excited to see where else you guys exhibit, honestly. I think that's going to be great. Uh, so what advice do you have for other aspiring artists out there that are looking at this and saying, oh, man, I would love to have my own exhibition one day? You go first? Um, I would just say to just don't think too hard because when I create I just I try my best not to overthink it I go with the flow and then I learn so much about myself in the end because it tells you something about yourself you didn't re even realize like subconsciously like creating art I think is the best way when, once you put too much thought into it it just becomes something else you know I feel like if you just go with it it's more you pour something from yourself onto whatever you create. And I would just say, like, if you ever have art block, like, just take a break, you know, just do something else. Yeah. Because sometimes when I get art block, I feel frustrated and then it affects the way I create. So your mind is just telling you, like, you know, you need a break. So. For sure. Because there's so many other things that inspire us other than art. Like, you got, you got to go out and you got to live life in order to be inspired sometimes. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Cool. What about you, Ray? I would say just do it. I feel that level of, <laughs> like, if you want okay, to create Nike. something, <laughs> create it. Stop questioning yourself. And, like, find the tools to do what you want to do. I want to start creating installation pieces in immersive rooms, and I started just getting a 10 by 10 canopy tent and just setting that up and making an installation there. Just like, and I'm probably still going to keep doing that because I just love just using such basic materials. Because if you want to make immersive rooms, there's plenty of ways to do that. For sure. What are you, like, where have you set up these tents before? I have set them at a lot of different, you know, underground events happening around Florida. Like, what's it called? Just, I know Philip does a house show all the time. Yes, we love Phil's house shows. And I've set my tent up there. Shouts out I've to Phil. I've had Phillip. different raves. I set my tent up. Nice. <laughs> Just very s places a lot of times you won't think to find an immersive installation mm -hmm. is where I usually find me. I love that idea because I, I, I love going to raves, but sometimes there is a sense of like, I would love to just go to a quiet room right now that isn't like 
a single stall bathroom that everyone's waiting in line for, like just to like disconnect for like a second. And it would be great. I actually, uh, I'm, I went to New College and we would have these huge campus wide parties and there was always a room away from the craziness that was like a prayer or a meditation room or like a, yes. like a soft, there's like soft textiles everywhere. There's pillows, there's maybe like some candles, some ambient music. There's lots of different textures you can play with, you know, especially people who are on psychedelics, you know, they want to recenter themselves. They can go to this place and they could, you know, ground themselves. And so that's definitely like in crying, in crying this little tense is this idea of that. If I was on a psychedelic right now, what would I want to experience? What would bring me comfort or what would like stimulate my yeah. mind right now? I would want to like, create, create something for my younger self has been like my kind of idea. Yeah, I like that method of like child, like inner child healing, because I, I, I definitely get that sense from both of your works. Like, yeah, and the way you incorporate this like plushy aspect to your work, it's sort of like creating these like youthful like toys and objects that, um, you know, lend itself to like, I could see you guys making like a really cool like kids show together honestly you know or like some sort of like demented like playground that kids would love to you know <laughs> explore I'm telling Yen, she lots needs of to make this into a puppet absolutely oh the piece is alive <laughs> <laughs> like i'm thinking i think you mentioned like what i want to explore next i want to explore puppets puppeteering yes yes and I exactly see, i saw this piece and was like you can just find ways to make the whole thing move like a huge puppet. Yeah, for sure. Are you guys familiar with Ponce Li Creacion? I'm not. Really? Oh my god, you guys should look into them. So they're, they're a Miami duo. They're twins uh, from Puerto Rico actually, but I, I think they, they come to Miami a lot for sure. Um, but they basically repurpose couches that they find on the street. They take the foam from them and they carve them into like these crazy sculptures. And they do like these different like pulley systems and like, or it's something as simple as like being behind the sculpture and like making it move in real time in a performance. I think I actually have seen it. Yes, yes I yeah, think they, I have. they actually, they're big now. They're at the MoMA now. They had a performance at the MoMA this past summer, I think. So, you know, there's definitely room in the art world for work like this of this magnitude like you guys can definitely be taken seriously at fine art as fine artists in a grander scale like you can take this different places and i think you could really grow it you could really grow this into a very um very fruitful career and you guys are going to be at the moment one day i'm sure <laughs> you guys will definitely if the poncilli rose could do it you could definitely do it because diy it's taking over the world it really is at least one would hope we could be part of the movement for that, you know. That's the goal. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, thank you guys for your time today. I really appreciate your time and energy and letting us pick your brains. Give us a round of applause for Rai and Yen. Yeah. So, before we wrap up here, where can we find you guys? What's your websites, your shameless plugs? Tell us the plugs. Plug yourselves. Um, I mostly use my Instagram. I don't have a website, but it's... That is your website. Yeah, it's OKN. Um, O-K-A-Y-E-N. That's what I use for all my handles. So. Cool. My current... You can usually find me on Instagram. My current Instagram is called Vitruvian Rizo, but I am changing it today to just Rizobo. Okay. So look out for both of those handles. Yeah. We'll also, you know, we post on the Diafano uh, Instagram, D-I-A-F-A-N-O dot O-V. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's where you can find us, and we'll be posting, you know, follow-up posts with the artist's handles in them and all that good stuff, recap reels, all that stuff. Um, so, yeah, thank you guys for coming out today. One more shout-out. We are in the Diofano Shotgun office. Thank you, Concreta Sala. Thank you, Probede. Thank you, Stephanie and Nick. Thank you, Philip, Mauricio, Charlie, everyone at MCR. And thank you all for being here today. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Have a great night. <laughs>